everyone welcome to my very first video for my new youtube channel developmental neuroscience videos for this very first video i will share some tips on how to apply an eeg cap to infants and young children because this can definitely be a challenge sometimes um, over the years, I gathered lots of experience with testing infants with EEG. Um, I tested about 200 infants and young children with EEG. So I definitely think I have some really good tips for you to make your life as a neuroscientist a little bit easier. So let's get started. So the very first tip I want to give is actually something that I noticed that when you're starting as a developmental neuroscientist or student, that you are very focused on the baby. And this is the very first tip I wanna give because um, a lot of people are focusing on the baby, making sure that the baby is okay, making sure that the baby is not stressed. And a lot of people completely forget the mom. But in my experience, the mom is really the key to have a successful EEG visit. Um, you really have to make sure that mom is relaxed. So the way you do this is to make sure that she's completely on board with what we're doing. Um, she needs to know about the EEG and she needs to feel comfortable with it. So um, this is very important because if mom is not relaxed, it kind of like translates into the baby not feeling relaxed. So my tip is definitely to only start with an EEG experiment if you feel that mom is really um, into it and mom is completely relaxed about what is going to happen. And then related to that, um, as a research scientist, as a research assistant in the lab, working with the mom and the baby, um, sometimes the dad actually, um, you have to talk and breathe relaxed. Um, I always talk to my students about the dentist voice and this is kind of like you're at the dentist um, and you notice that your dentist always tells you what is going to happen. Um, so a dentist talks about like, okay, now I'm going to apply this thing here and now I'm going to do this and this. This might tingle a little bit. So this is exactly what we're doing with the EEG. Obviously the baby doesn't understand it, but it's more for the mom. So again, you're really focusing on relaxing mom more than you're actually relaxing the baby. So when you apply the cap, you're really like, okay, now we're going to apply the cap. There we go. Oh, doesn't that look like cute? Oh, look at your mom. Oh, that is so cute. So you're really helping mom understand what's going on by telling what is going on. So you immediately say it while you're doing it. That's also what the dentist is going to do. Um, usually they tell you like, okay, and now I'm going to do this. And then there's actually, <laughs> you can't really stop him. He's already doing it. So that's kind of what we do with the EEG too. We're telling mom what is going to happen and what we're doing um, in a very relaxed and calm way. And we act as if we do it every day. We actually do. Um, but that makes mom and the child feel more relaxed um, and like a very normal procedure and that we know what we're doing. Um, breathing, I noticed, is also very important. I really noticed that when you breathe a little bit more superficial and you're a little bit more stressed, that a lot of babies actually pick this up and become a little bit fuzzy. So make sure that the students in your lab or whether you are a student working in a lab, that you notice how you talk and how you breathe. Then um, you really need some toys in your lap to distract the baby. Um, babies can get a little bit grabby, um, especially when they're about six months and older. They tend to grab the electrodes. Um, they get very um, curious about what's going to happen and they might grab the electrodes. And the electrodes are very expensive, so you don't want them to grab it. And um, what happens sometimes, it definitely happened to me, is that you're almost done with the electrodes and then the baby starts like, pulls all of the electrodes out and you have to start over. So you definitely don't want to happen, uh, have that happen. Um, so you need some toys. Um, some really good toys that you need to have is definitely um, bubbles. So blowing bubbles really works. It's a really good distractor. Um, having some other toys, um, actually 
faces of people help. So not really a toy, but um, we actually usually have one student that is focusing on distracting the baby. And that can also be with just your own face being pretty close and being like, hey, hey, hello. Um, I noticed that um, babies are very intrigued by people with glasses. So I was a really good candidate for doing this actually. <laughs> And um, for the very grabby babies, um, you can actually put the cap, um, an extra cap on top of the net. So that's what you can see in the picture that I have posted here. Um, this is a baby that is wearing the biosemi cap, the green one. And then we actually put a red one on top of it. So the electrodes are actually under the cap and we put a red cap on top of it. It's an adult sized red cap from biosemi. Um, and because we do this, um, kind of like the electrodes are protected, so the baby cannot pull the electrodes out. So we only do this if we have a really grappy baby. Um, because on the downside, you have to be careful with overheating the baby. Um, because if the baby becomes a little bit sweaty, and babies do become sweaty sometimes, um, um, then that can actually um, give you bridges in your data. So if the sweat comes uh, together with the gel, you can kind of create bridges and you really don't want that. That's probably something I will discuss in some of my next videos. Um, but you have to make sure that the baby is not getting too hot. Then for the very active and curious babies, sometimes you have a baby that is so happy and curious and active, wants to touch everything, wants to see everything. So what we usually do with these babies before we start is let them explore the room first. So we put them on the floor and we kind of like let them explore the room so it's not that novel anymore. So this can take like 10 minutes sometimes. Um, if after 10 minutes they're still very active and exploring, you can always put the net or the cap on on the floor. We actually did that a couple of times and it worked out really well. Um, yeah, so these are some of the tips that I like to share. I have a lot of more tips about developmental neuroscience. So please subscribe to my channel and let me know if you liked it. If you want to know more, um, anything, just let me know. And um, if you have specific questions, please let me know in the comments below. And um, see you next time. Please subscribe. Thank you.